What if I told you that there was an NES game with all the gritty realism, violence, and criminal gameplay of Grand Theft Auto? It's got drugs, prostitutes, explosions, driving, random unfeeling murder. Yeah, Motor City Patrol is chock full of that. Minus the everything, but hold the driving. Motor City Patrol is the only game ever released by Matchbox, and it's basically a video game commercial for their brand of tiny collectible vehicles. I was more of a Micro Machine kid myself, a toy franchise that also got an NES game. If you haven't played it, Micro Machines is a really good racing game, and arguably the best unlicensed title on the NES. But back to the matter at hand. So I wasn't kidding, Motor City Patrol looks just like the early top-down style GTA games. You drive around a huge world looking for crimes and apparently trying not to shoot innocent citizens. There's no music, just the sweet sounds of your engine and your car constantly running into concrete posts. Seriously, I've never seen a city with so many bollard line curbs. They're everywhere. Oh wait, there is music. When you pause the game. Why, 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 why would you ever do that? Pause screens are a respite, not the place to hide the mediocre compositions your cousin came up with on his Casio. The graphics here are great. The levels are massive, which is really impressive for the NES. And wow, there's actually a really useful map that points out the locations of your objectives. So this isn't a game like, say, Dick Tracy, where you're kind of just wandering around aimlessly. Well, I take that back. Even with the map and clearly highlighted locations, I still cannot tell what you're supposed to do. You drive to those spots and, I don't know, occasionally your lights come on? I tried shooting a car and immediately got a game over for roughing up a civilian. This kind of confusion is absolutely one of the downsides of buying retro games secondhand. If you didn't also purchase the manual, you may have no idea what the controls are, or even what the objective of the game is. Thank God for the internet! So here's how Mutter City Patrol works. In each level, you've got areas you need to patrol, indicated by these red targets. And after driving around for a while, at some point you'll see other colored circles on the map. The black circles are civilians in these green cars. You can run into them all you want, but if you shoot them, it's game over. The red circles are speeders, and unfortunately their cars are the same green sedans as the civilians, so the only way you'll know that this car has offended thee is to check the map. The yellow circles are robbers who show up in these red cars, which makes them super easy to identify. They're always referred to as being callous, which seems like you're really typecasting them. Maybe they're happy-go-lucky robbers like in Ocean's Eleven, or altruistic robbers like in Robin Hood. The huge red circle indicates a public enemy. You don't need to check your map for these guys. The game will pause momentarily to tell you who's on the run. This is a really great detail with these wanted poster mock-ups of these super criminals. Like the Menendez brothers here who are wanted for extortion. When you arrest them, you get this rad little cutscene of you and your partner, I didn't know there was anyone else with you, bending one of them over the hood. Sexy. To arrest these bad guys, you can either shoot their cars, which I've never done successfully, or you can just pull your car in front of theirs and that's enough. Sometimes they even do this by accident. Each level is timed, and your goal is basically to just arrest as many of these offenders as possible. You'll get warnings for using your gun at the wrong time, or for letting too many criminals get away. Too many warnings and it's game over. The only other way for the game to end is for you to wreck your car, which is pretty funny to me. You could drive around all day, ramming civilian vehicles repeatedly with no effect to your car's health, but all the stationary objects on the screen deal major damage. Often I find myself just trying to run out the time when the health bar gets low, only to keep accidentally ramming parked cars until my own vehicle explodes. Oops! Each level is a different neighborhood located within one of the city's five precincts. There's apparently other locations like the suburbs and the waterfront, but I've been playing this for a couple hours and I'm still driving around the first precinct. I want to stick it out to see if there's anything exciting about these later stages, but sorry, I've got my limits. The gameplay itself is not especially thrilling. The driving mechanics are a little clunky, not quite as bad as the aforementioned Dick Tracy, but not the most responsive. A lot of these spaces on the street are just big enough for your car to get stuck, Austin Powers style. 
There's these upgrades you can purchase for use in the next stage, but honestly, they just make your car faster or turning better, which sounds great in theory, but these improvements actually make your car harder to control. The driving around and arresting people is pretty repetitive, but it's actually pretty fun. Way more exciting than I expected considering my initial thoughts about the gameplay. The main issue for me with Motor City Patrol is the map. It's actually very useful, clearly pointing out where criminals are at any point in time. The problem is that their location, or even their existence, changes every 5 to 10 seconds. This means that ultimately you spend as much time looking at the map as you do driving. Seriously, look at this footage of me trying to track a speeder. I'm not OCD or anything. This is absolutely necessary to check your position this constantly. I think an on-screen map like in Legend of Zelda, coupled with a distinct color for speeders, would make this experience way more fluid. I think there's a really interesting framework of a game here, it's just missing a ton of gameplay elements. If there were NPCs walking around and you could exit your car and enter buildings, Motor City Patrol would be 10 times better. Even if this game were just the drive and arrest format already in place, a few tweaks could take this from barely known to at least a hidden gem. Add in some story or even unique cases for you to work, and this could become a top 20 NES title. Come to think of it, I basically just described Police Quest, the Sierra Cop Simulator adventure game. Sadly, revisionist reviews do not make mediocre games into good ones, so Motor City Patrol will probably eternally linger in obscurity. <laughs>